You the bad one. No, you the that, bad one. That one is the bad one. You, you not very nice. Bang. You know what? You got better than the farming simulator. You just got real life. You got real life farming. You don't know how lucky you got it. Good morning. We're back on the planter. We kind of been, uh, it's something we'd probably have already have done if it hadn't, you know, if we thought we was going to be in the field anytime soon, but we just been putting it off due to, uh, you know, we get two or three days of pretty weather, so, and but it wouldn't dry out enough to plant. So we've been getting our dirt work done and we knew we was gonna have this stretch of rainy weather. Got an inch and a half of rain last night and got two more big days of rain forecasted. So we'll show y'all what we're doing in a minute. We're uh, working on replacing some bushings in the wheel frame. So first thing we got to do We've got to, got to pull this cylinder out. We've got to pull these spacers out. Then we'll loosen these bolts and push them. When you take them spacers out and loosen them bolts, you can push them clamp, push that frame together. And then your bottom half of the wheel frame will fall out and then you can wheel it out and replace your bushings. So let's get started. Robert's undoing the chain there. Where uh, those chains are to keep the cylinders from overextending. These planters originally had what's called a master cylinder that determined how high the planter raised up and to make the planter raise up evenly. Well, ours busted, and I've done forgot how high that thing was. I know a kit for it was like 400 bucks, and I can't remember how high the cylinder is, and I'm not sure you can even get the cylinder anymore. But we put this, we put this contraption right here on. That's called a rotary flow divider. And what that does is that allows the planter to pick up evenly. If you don't have that in there, the side with the least resistance will pick up first and it'll pick up like that. Okay. So if you got some boxes over here that's got a little more seed in them than this side, well that side's gonna pick up higher. So you've got to have that, I think it's called a gear rotary flow divider. Now Robert's pulling out the bolts. Those little blocks hold this cylinder in. On this one over here, Robert actually worked on it by himself yesterday. I wouldn't have wanted to tackle it by myself, but he done it. He stout. But he's loosening them bolts to pull this cylinder out. We're gonna leave, we're gonna try leaving this hose hooked up. That way we don't have oil all over the floor.
way up back and you way up to the left a little. Some of these bushings ain't too bad. Some of them are pretty rough. Yeah, thank you. No, this was all right. When we find a bad one, we'll show you. Tightening the cylinder back up. I broke my first sweat of the year. The first of many, I'm sure. Not really hot today, it's just humid. Shop floor sweating. That's making it nice. But those cylinders have little ears on it, and these blocks hold it in place. There you can see. Right there, the shiny part you see, that's the new bushing. This right here, that's a burn from back when it was a shaft drive planter before we converted it to hydraulic drive. That's some of the best money I've ever spent. Absolutely love it. Would not want to go back to dealing with sprockets and chains and transmissions. I think the only thing left to do is tighten up the mainframe bolts and tighten that spacer up there. Funny story, when we rebuilt this, uh, when we rebuilt this planter, we had that master cylinder on it like we was talking about, and we was trying to get it bled out. These are blader screws to get the air out of the system. Well, we loosened one of them up and was trying to get the air out of it. And it was sitting, the planter was sitting back there about where that truck was. And he, Robert pulled the lever to raise that thing up. Well, that blader screw gave up the ghost. And I think there's a hole, somewhere, there was a hole somewhere <laughs> in the shop. It shot that blader screw up there, hit the roof. Sounded like a shotgun going off. Oh, blew up our plum up there to the roof. It was raining down hydraulic oil. It was a mess. We went up there to co-op, got some, uh, got some oil dry, and I went up there like, I need 500 pounds of oil dry. And I was like, what? I was like, yep, we got a mess. That's one of the best things we ever did was done away with that master cylinder and went to that flow divider. Right here's the hydraulic drive like I was talking about. It goes up here and hooks on the top drive of the transmission. You can still change these sprockets around for different ratios, but where we've got it right now, the hydraulic drive has a very wide range, so that's where we're going to leave it. This, this bottom shaft is the one, there used to be a shaft that come, come up underneath them wheel frames and it hooked on 
either this gear or this gear and then these gears went up there and pulled these gears which turned your shafts that drive your meters uh, this was the sprocket you ran planting corn and this was the extended I think they called it extended drive sprocket you used it planting soybeans you could use this sprocket planting soybeans but you had to use the smallest sprocket you could yeah I believe it was the smallest sprocket down here and the biggest sprocket up there and you were still planting 120 30 thousand but when you use this one right here, it slow, really, really slowed that transmission down and allowed you to have more of a wider, wider range planting soybeans. <laughs> we got several serial number tags on this one. This is the, that's the original tag for the uh, planter bar. That part's a 79 model. And this is the serial number tag for the row units, and I believe they, believe they was an 82, best I remember. 82 units and on a 79 frame. And these markers are off a 7200 planter. You can see where we cut the bar off and I welded the brackets on for these near style markers. 7000 had markers the cylinder was up in the tube and it had a slide system and it had a cable that hooked them two markers together. Terrible, terrible design. All right, we gotta make sure we got the unit back, the wheel frames back where they need to be. Looks like it needs to. All right, so now I got left one up some. This one? Yep. Snug this one up some. Alright, let's snug the bottom one good. Tighten the PP. This is test one. We've got this left hand side redone and we're going to raise it up and see if all goes everywhere or what happens. What I was talking about on that flow divider. It's just gonna take it a second to get that. Uh, it's gonna take it a second to get that air out of the system. That's more better. So here's a good example of why we're changing these frame bushings. See right here where it's lower thin and how there's a gap right there. That should be tightly seated on that stub there. So that's why we're having that's why we're having to do this. Got the same thing over here on this side gap. See where it's lower thin. So, that's the reason we're changing it. We're trying something a little different on this one. We've got the, uh, we've got the planter up on stops, up on the cylinder stops, meaning the planter's locked up. We left that stop out. So this one wheel is holding the planter Over here on this side, we've got both the cylinder stops in. Well, it's made stuff a little easier to get to in there. And like Robert said, you're not down there wallering on the ground. 
I got to knock that spacer out and we got to loosen these bolts and this deal should be ready to roll out and put the next set of bushings in. As Robert said, that was much easier. <laughs> One thing helped, we got this cylinder up out of the way. We had enough holes on it that it was flexible enough to fold it up out there the way. It's, it's a little less convenient leaving that cylinder hooked up but it's a whole lot less messy. All right, we're gonna knock some more, knock some more bushings out. Ah, uh, here, here's one of the bad ones. No. <laughs> Get on my camera. Get on my camera. You can have it in a minute. See right there where she's wore through. Now she hit the knee. Dad the bad one. Dad the bad one. You the bad one. No, he the bad one. You the bad one. Who gave you breathing treatments yesterday when you didn't feel good? Ew. Ah, I think. And that the cold one. That the cold one. And that the bad one. The freezer is not better than me. Not by a long shot. And me, me the cold one and him the cold one. But that is a bad one. That's the bad one. I can be a little bit of a booger to get started. And that's the bad one. I thought you wanted me to buy you the new farming simulator game. Please, well, you, you sitting there calling me the bad one. Buy it. Buy it for me. You sitting there calling me the bad one and wanting me to buy you farming simulator. Please. You know what? You got better than the farming simulator. You just got real life. You got real life farming. You don't know how lucky you got it. I'm an idiot, and I don't Farming's know. a lot easier on a computer than it is in real life. Dad, you need... Coming apart ain't that bad. It's going back together. That's a booger bear. Trying to get all that stuff lined up. All right, come on in here. Well, maybe it's going to be easier things. Give him a clamp. I'll get that one healed. <laughs> that one slipped right in. See if this one will go on me. I think it needs to go over at the top. Where'd my picker go? There we go. Why, why didn't we do that other side like that? We need what? a port of fire. Yeah. Ooh, there it 
Okay. Look at there. We're figuring stuff out past the time we're done. Imagine that. I'll turn back on in a minute. We get smart on the last. Put the old ratchet on that one and uh, make sure they're tight, and this job will be complete. This is going to be a short video, but if you own a 7,000 planter and wondering how to do this job, now you know. <laughs> <laughs>